Hello and welcome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be showing you what's new in the Lightroom Classic release at Max 2020. So there'll be a few things, or a couple of things that I'll be able to show you and you'll be able to see them, but there are some things that I can't show you because they're performance related. I'll just talk to them. And then there's a feature that I don't have the hardware to show you, but people that do will be happy about. So let's get into the uh, couple of things that you can see right off the bat. I've got an image open here and we know for many years or pretty much since day one, if you wanted to zoom in on an image while you're looking at it either in the um, loop view or develop module, either way, you just click on it and it would zoom in to whatever your preset size is and then zoom back out. All right, that's not new. What's new is the, you have one more ability to do this. Let's say I wanted to zoom in on this rock specifically. Well, now I could hold down my command key on Mac and PC control key. And while I'm holding that key down, I get a marquee. So I can, I can um, select just a specific area of the photo and zoom up to that area only to discover I've got a problem with chromatic, chromatic aberration, this halo going around my image. Now I may not have noticed that before, but now that I can zoom in on a specific area or zoom in really tightly easily, I can go ahead and fix those things right off the bat. All right, there's one thing I almost forgot, so I came back and re-recorded just this one little piece. And that is, um, in addition to the marquee zoom by holding down your command key on Mac or control key on Windows, you also have a scrubby slider. So if you just hold down your shift key, you can actually scrub and zoom in to a specific spot um, very quickly with the GPU acceleration as well. You also notice that no longer do you have the one-to-one -one and one-to-two and all of those different aspects aspects of zooming it's percentage based just like it is in photoshop and most other programs you're used to so shift key to get this the um, scrubby slider now i'm going to head back to the loop view and in loop view you'll notice i also have a zoom slider and this is now new on the toolbar the way to get to this is simply go to your tools pop up the menu on the right hand side and you can enable that zoom slider or turn it off just like you can enable anything you want on the toolbar. Um, that's not new, but the zoom slider is. So if you like your color labels, if you like, um, I don't know, if you like the sorting, if you like any of those controls, you can add them to the toolbar, including a brand new zoom slider, um, just like using the shift key in the develop module. So that's it. Let's head back to the develop module. Let's keep going. So enhanced zooming, scroll wheel support, all of that's built into Lightroom Classic now on the desktop. All right, next up is um, the ability to do professional color grading. And this actually replaces split toning. So if you, have, if you remember the split toning panel, it's now been replaced with a color grading panel. And for those of you who are not familiar with that term, what's color grading? Color grading is actually something you see every day you watch movies and TV shows. It's the, it's the director's ability to have the editing team make a scene look a specific way. For example, I'm a Game of Thrones fan and, and I like the, many of the outdoor scenes they shoot because they make it look extra cold. When you're by that mountain of ice, even though the ice is probably not real, it looks like it's really cold there and they're freezing. That could have been shot in the middle of July. <laughs> what makes it look so cold it's because they purposely add blue to the scene. The scene is bluer, which makes it look and feel colder, even though it may not be as cold as it looks. Well, now photographers can add that professional level of color grading to their photos. And this also helps when you're taking photos in different locations at different times of day, but you want to tell a consistent story and you want them to look the same. So I bring up the color grading tab and I basically get three easy ways to do this. I have my shadows, my highlights, and my um, midtones. So if I wanted my highlights, which is mainly the sky area to look bluer, well I can just drag over to the blue and make the highlights bluer or any other color I want to color grade that area of the scene. So you can create some dramatic effects and you can get those uh, deep rich color grading colors that you want throughout your scene. If I wanted to go to my shadows, for example, and make those mountains a little greener, I can just drag over to the green area and make those mountains a little greener. And of course, this is all non-destructive and it can be applied to a preset as well. You have the ability to um, 
blend and balance those colors as well so you can make it more make it less it's up to you just with a slider without affecting the individual color reels and of course any split toning you have done already will translate over to the new color grading properties so uh, color grading non-destructively new in uh, Lightroom Classic here on the desktop all right, next up, and these are some of those things that I remember, remember I mentioned things I won't be able to really show you, but I'll talk to them. One, I can't show you just because I don't have the hardware for it, and that is for my Canon shooters. I'm a, I'm a Nikon shooter, Nikon shooter, so I don't have any Canon bodies to show you this with. But one of the most requested features I get on my YouTube channel is well, every time I show tethering, people are always asking, when's Lightroom going to support live view for tethering? That answer is today for my Canon users. So Canon users are going to get it first um, because it, you know, it just ready and performs well on Canon today. So uh, you will be able to tether like you always did, uh, everyone that can tether. But now if you're on a Canon body, you will be able to tether and see the live view as you're doing that. So yay, finally, I don't have to, I don't have to um, ignore that question anymore. <laughs> there is an answer. And uh, we're working on it for, for the other platforms we support for tethering as well, including Nikon. All right, so with that said, that's one I just can't show you because I don't have the hardware, but it's available. If you're a Canon shooter, you can go use that today. Now, the other things that are across the board that I just don't, like you don't really see them in a menu option, because there are performance improvements we make every time we're working on Lightroom. So one of those performance enhancements is just GPU acceleration of your local correction. So anytime you're using an adjustment brush, the radio gradient or the linear gradient, uh, those should now be faster based on the GPU. Your scrubby sliders, uh, scrubbing sliders should now be faster. Optimized scrolling of the grid, folders and collections, making it up to two times faster. So just a faster performing Lightroom. Brushing should now be two time, up, to, up to two times faster. So those are things that just work better now that you're using this new version of Lightroom Classic. Now, um, this version, because it implements some new things under the hood, when you upgrade and you open your existing catalog, you're going to get that scary warning. It's not scary at all, though. That says, I'm going to convert your catalog. I'm going to make a copy. So what that's really doing is it's not touching your existing catalog. It's taking your existing catalog, making a copy of it for this new version, leaving your existing catalog intact. So you can always go back to a previous version of Lightroom and use that if you ever had to, if you, as long as you keep that old copy of the catalog. It will also rename it with the new, um, new naming scheme, which you could change, which will now say version 10, B10 Lightroom catalog. So that's, again, when you get that warning, people freak out. Oh, no, what's it doing to my catalog? Nothing. It's just letting you know, if you read the fine print, it's making a copy, leaving your old catalog alone. All right, so with that said, thanks for watching. Happy Lightroom, happy Max, and stay tuned for more as we continue to explore what's new in uh, the Creative Cloud releases for Max. And also, uh, as a photographer, don't forget to check out my weekly, mostly weekly show, uh, my photography masterclass at Adobe Live at b.net slash Adobe Live every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. And we will uh, see more there. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.